Good evening again, my beloved. Good to be back with you again this week. I'm excited to continue our study uh, from the book of Nehemiah as we integrate it with uh, leadership uh, principles. I hope you enjoyed last week. And if you have any questions, of course, you know, you can email your questions to uh, Livingstone Bible Study, and we will do our best to, um, to answer all your questions. So anyway, we want to get into it tonight because I kind of ran short of time last week because I talked too much. But this week, we're going to get straight to the point. So we're going to begin, as we always do, with prayer. Father God, again, we come before you. We honor you, God, because of who you are. We love you, Lord. We know there's nobody we can compare you to, Lord. Your word says that you are God all by yourself. So we love you, God, and we praise you, and we honor you, God, for every opportunity that we have, Lord, to be in your presence and to learn, God. Your word says, above all, get an understanding. So, God, that's our total intent, is that we will come to a clear understanding in your word and what you say to us from your word. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of just being here tonight, that you've spared us yet another week to come in, in your presence and study your word. Bless the word as it goes forth tonight, and I pray again, Lord, that it will be presented with clarity to the extent that all of us will be more informed by the end of this session. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of serving you in this manner. This is our prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, by way of review, we talked last week about what, it, what, what, what a leader, leader was, what leadership is, and what it meant to be leading people. And we talked about how we were going to discover, discuss, I should say, three parts to good leadership. And we're going to take them one by one. Uh, and they are love for God and his word, character and temperament, and integrity. Well, we're still in the middle of love for God and his word. And we came to a portion of that study about prayer, how important it is for, to pray. Because as we study the book of Nehemiah, we see that Nehemiah prayed often. He Prayer was, prayer was his key to his relationship with God and his ability to do what he did, he always prayed. And so we, so that led us to, uh, to bring out some points of the necessity of prayer in the life of a, of a leader. And that's where we stopped last week. So we're going to pick up right there. We're still in the book of Nehemiah and we're still in chapter one. It's where we will pick up tonight and we probably hopefully get to chapter two. We'll, we'll do our best. But anyway, just, just suffice it to say, that prayer is important in the life of a leader because God guides us through prayer. Um, and in order for us to be leaders, we need to listen to God for his directions in our own life. Because you see, we can't lead if we're not living an exemplary life ourselves. And God will give us directions in our life as well as uh, principles in leadership to lead his people. So it, so that's why it's important that you have a prayer life. And as I, I, I closed last week with this, and I still say it, that if you show me a leader without a prayer life, and I'll show you one that's already failed. So, and we don't, we're not talking failure here. We're talking getting up to where God wants us to be as a leader. So some of the uh, points of necessity of prayer. First thing, when you talk about the necessity of prayer, um, uh, the clearest way for leaders to demonstrate their, their faith in God is through their prayer lives. And I'm going to give you a few pointers. First of all, uh, there's nothing of eternal significance, nothing of eternal significance that happens apart from God. So you, you, you need to have God a part of everything you do. Turn with me to John 15, 5. As usual, we, we use in our Bibles, John 15, 5. And we're going to pick up right there with our scriptures. We're going to read several scriptures. But I want, I want to use our scriptures just to support what we're teaching and how important we can't do anything without God. So this is John 15, 5. And again, it's the word of Jesus. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He who abideth in me and I in him bears much fruit. Here's the key. For without me, you can do nothing. These are Jesus' words, written in red in my Bible. So we know the significance of it. So here again, uh, the, there's nothing of eternal significance that happens apart from God. That, that's number one. And secondly, 
prayer is fundamental because if you're going to be a spiritual leader, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So the, the, the filling of the Spirit is imperative because you, 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 you're being guided and led by the Holy Spirit. And so that's all the fundamental to, uh, to be to part, as part of your prayer life is uh, life in the Spirit and being able to, to, to hear, his, hear, hear the Spirit speak to you clearly. And then um, one thing we need to understand that without, without the, Spirit, the Spirit's activity in your life, meaning the Holy Spirit, you may be a leader, but you're not a spiritual leader. And we're talking here specifically to spiritual leaders, people that are in, in churches and lead in churches, not just in the secular world. So without the Spirit's activity in your life, which includes your prayer life, uh, you may be a leader according to uh, the world's way, but you're not a spiritual leader. And then because God, God's wisdom, it, it makes you uh, aware of things and you should dedicate yourself to praying and, and attaining the wisdom of God. And then again, um, you pray to God because we know God is all powerful. We can't, there's nothing God can't do. So when you want something, if you need some directions, some guidance, ask God. Who, who better to ask how to lead his people than the creator of the people? Amen. And so you pray again because when you, this is, now this is real life here. Being in leadership brings about a lot of stress in any position, uh, profession or whatever. If you're in a leadership position, it, stress comes along as part of the job. You, would, you might say. And so we have to realize that the Bible, again, we go to the Bible, and in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast your cares upon me because he care, I care for you. So when we go to God in prayer and we go to his word, which are in the two come, uh, come together, um, the stress that you're under can be relieved because God has promised Again, from from First Peter, write that down and look at and look it up for yourself. We won't look it up tonight because we got a long way to go. Um, but First Peter it says, "Cast all your cares on Him because He cares about you." I'm paraphrasing, of course, but I want you to go there in your in your Bible reading time when you're feeling stressed out. Go to the Word and you'll find comfort for your souls. You'll find peace in the midst of a storm. That's your stress release is the Word and and prayer, prayer is your stress relief. And so, and, and, and God reveals his agenda to us through prayer. So if you want to know what to do for God and how to do it for God and how to be the best leader you can be, you cannot get away from prayer. And again, we, we also say that your prayer life determines the effectiveness of your leadership. That is as true as it can get. It, your, your leadership will not be affected if you don't have a prayer life. And so, uh, that I want you to know also that uh, the first step in any venture is, is to pray. And, and so you, you pray because prayer governs your conduct, prayer conducts your character, and prayer is um, it's just essential because conduct is what we do, but character is who we are, okay? And so when you pray to God, your character is built. It's a stress reliever, and it also builds your character. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, and then chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, it talks about walking circumspectly in the world and, and uh, uh, watching our conversation and our temper and things like that. So, we, again, prayer combined with the Word of God is essential for all leaders. And you'll note that Nehemiah prayed at least eight times. In this, in in doing the doing this uh, job that he was on, I counted them, and I hope I counted them right. So you might want to, in your study, everywhere you see, um, it's called deductive Bible study. Everywhere you see the word where he prayed, underline, highlight it in the same color, so you can go back and time, count for yourself how many times he prayed. That's how essential prayer was to Nehemiah. Okay, okay. So now we're gonna read his prayer. Because I want, there's some things I want to point out to you uh, in this prayer that Nehemiah prayed. I want, I'm going to call attention to a couple of things that are important for us as we go through our study, of course, 
about good, great leadership. Amen. So I'm going to read the prayer. And it's, it's, it may be by some people's standards extensive, but I'm going to read it anyway. Just bear with me, okay? So Nehemiah chapter 1, and this is the prayer that he prayed. And I said, I pray, O Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant in mercy with those who you love and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive to you and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. And he goes on to talk about how they've acted corruptly and not kept the commandments. And But then he gets to verse 8, he says, uh, remember, he, I mean, he talks about, in verse 7, he says, um, you commanded your servant Moses, and he said, remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them through some of you, though some of you are cast out, I will gather you from there and bring you to the place which I've given you. And then he concludes his prayer by saying, now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power. Remember, God had brought them out of captivity and by your strong hand. He ends his prayer by saying, Oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire your name and let your servant prosper this day. I pray and grant him mercy, I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. So that's, that's the essence of Nehemiah's prayer. And two things I want to point out. First, he talked about uh 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 God and how powerful God is. He says in verse number, verse number five, he says, I pray Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God. He acknowledged the holiness of God at the very beginning of his prayer. He, and because when you love God and you keep his commandments, and I'm sorry, when you love God and you pray and you give God that honor at the beginning of your prayer, that's, that, that opens up your heart to understand and to embrace who God is. Before you start asking God for anything in any prayer, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who he is. Acknowledge his holiness. Acknowledge his power. Acknowledge his goodness. Acknowledge everything about him before you start asking for stuff. It's just in order. Because if you remember in what we commonly call the Lord's Prayer, uh, it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So, at the very beginning of the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, there was honor for God. So Nehemiah was, was within that pattern. When he started to pray, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. That's key. That's what I want to point out there. And, and, then, uh, and then verse number eight, when he talks about, remember what you said to Moses. I'm paraphrasing, of course. So when you pray, and you pray according to what God has already done, rather than what we are asking him to do, you open up God's, um, you, you, oh, you, you attract God's blessings because you're letting God know, I know something about you. I know what you've done. I know how you've done these things. And I know your promises to those who follow your commandments. So when we get ready to pray, uh, remember, uh, to call to God, say out to God things that God has done. Not that he don't know, but it's just still in the area of reverence in him. When you acknowledge that you have knowledge of the things that he has done already. Amen. And so then I want something else. He identified himself as a servant. We, we talked about, we talked about servanthood earlier. So, uh, verse number six, he says, Please let your ear be attentive to your and your eyes open. And he calls himself and hear the prayer of your servant. I also went through and counted the number of times he called himself a servant uh, in this prayer. And there were several times he referred to himself as a servant. He honored God. He recognized the power of God. He calls himself a servant. And something else he did. He admitted his faults and his shortcomings. Look at verse number Verse number, ooh, where am I? Verse number six, he said, um, beginning at the middle of, he says, 
And I just start at the beginning. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayers of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which are of sin, both my father's house and I have sinned. So when you when you are praying and you are uh, petitioning God for something, as Nehemiah did, and even in the, in the world of a leadership, be honest and aware. Admit your past failures. Admit your success, your successes. You want God to 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 hear your whole heart, not try to cover up things, if you will, because you cannot successfully lead anyone if you don't admit who you are. That that that's real talk. And I'll say it again. You cannot successfully lead anyone if you don't know who you are and admit who you are and, and where God has brought you from. Because remember now, we, we, we're, we're, we're in a position for people to uh, learn from us. We're guiding people in a leadership position. So if your stuff is raggedy, what are you presenting to other people? So we need, and I like that about Nehemiah. You know, he, he kept himself honest in his prayer to God. And so that's, that's, that's where we need to understand that prayer is so essential in the life of a, of, a, of a leader. You cannot get past prayer. You cannot get past a relationship with Jesus Christ. You cannot get past uh, opening up yourself and being honest with God. So if you're going to petition God, do it the way it's supposed to be done. When you pray, honor God first. Honor him. Honor him first. And don't try to hide who you are. Be honest. Because honor, we're going to talk about honor and respect as we go through this study. Honor and respect are essential. Respect, I'm sorry, is essential to, in your life, if you are going to lead people, they need to respect you. Amen? And you begin by respecting yourself. Amen? So now we're going to go to part two. Our second topic we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about character and temperament and attitude. Ah, uh, how many times have we uh, in this study ran across character? How important character in not just this study, in Bible study overall, we've we spent a lot of time talking about character and and um, your temperament and your attitude and all that. And that's that's really, really important if you are in a leadership position. Your character is on is on is is on on point, it's on, it's in view all the time. People, there's an old saying, I can't hear what you're saying for seeing what you do. And your character is what is, 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 is your outward life. It's what you do. Amen. And so we want you to know that character is life unseen. It's hidden within you, but it's evidenced by what, what you show people. Your character. That, that, that's so important. Now, conduct, how we act, carry it out. Is external and is seen from without, but character comes from within. So we're going to talk a lot about character and how important character is. And character, of course, communicates respect. It 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 it, it lets people know that you are in a position to receive respect. And when you don't have character within you, you can't earn respect from people if you don't have good character. Let let's just put it out there. That is real. And respect is essential for a lasting leadership, for to lead people. We must, it's absolutely necess necessary that we show respect, that we live a, live a respectful life because people won't follow anyone that they don't respect. That, that's, that's real time. That's real life there. They will not. And so, and then secondly, you have to understand that all leaders, all leaders have uh, an area of influence. You, you remember you're influencing people by your character and by your temperament and by what you and by what you do. And so uh, turn with me. I want you to see this. It's important that you read this to Proverbs 27. Keep your keep your bookmark in Nehemiah, but go to Proverbs 27. And this is as plain as day about how important your character and your conduct is. Proverbs 27, 19. I'm getting there. My my pages are sticking together. My Bible is so old, but I love this Bible. Mm -hmm. Proverbs twenty seven nineteen. Are you there? Okay, 
Let's read. As in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals the man. Did you get that? Let's read it again. And as in water, face reflects face. When you look at in, in, you, in water, in a river or a lake or something, there's a reflection of who you are. You see yourself just as you are without, the, without touch ups and all that kind of stuff face to face. But it says, as in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals the man. So whoever you are in your heart, that's what you reflect. That's what you, that's what influences people one way or another, either good or bad, because of what comes, the contents of your heart. And you know, another place in Proverbs, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So your heart is important if you're going to influence people. And we never know how much we're going to influence people. You, you just never know. And the best investment, the best investment in the future is a proper influence today. That the best, the best, the best investment in the future is a proper influence today. And so just, just uh, uh, trying to be influential, you need to know how to do it according to God's word, not just a popularity thing or something that you've made up because uh, in, in, according to God's word and his will, because Bible influence is the fruit of a matured person. When your influence is coming strictly from what you have uh, learned from studying God's word, it's, 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 it's so much different when you're doing it according to how God says we're supposed to be as opposed to having an overwhelming personality and charisma. That'll take you so far, but it won't, it won't last. So for lasting, for lasting uh, uh, influence, we need to know from the Bible, what does God say? How do we influence people? And again, Nehemiah is a good example. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 4. We're going to skip on over to chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 14 uh, because they'd start having some problems um, with, with, with the people around them who were opposing what they were doing. And so Nehemiah, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 14 says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and the rest of the people. This is Nehemiah encouraging people and how much influence he had over people. He says, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, honoring God again. And fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters and your houses. So he's, he, he's influencing them. He's encouraging them. Don't be frightened by those people. And then we go back over to chapter 2. We kind of switch going back and forth. In chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, this is, I like this verse to show how much influence he had over the people. He says, then I said to them, you see the distress we are in, how Jerusalem lies in waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come. Let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, now they, after he talked to them, this is their response to him. Let us rise up and build. That's, that's the level of influence Nehemiah had with those people. Because he was a godsend. His heart was towards them. They said, let us rise up and build. And they set their hands to do this good work. So Influence is important. If you're going to be leading people, you, you got to have a level of godly influence over them. And it depends on your character and your temperament. Because nobody would have followed Nehemiah if he'd gone there. And, and we'll see as, if you studied chapter 2, you've seen how he went at night by himself and he examined the damage. And he, God had given him the vision and the plan and everything. And he kept that to himself because, and we'll discuss that later. But he went himself. And so he would know what to expect and what to present to the people. But, but then, but if he'd gone there and I'm Nehemiah and I came to do this and I'm in charge of this, and blah, do you think anybody would have followed him? Who follows somebody with an attitude? That's my question. Who follows someone with an attitude? Nobody does. And so we find here that Nehemiah had a vision. He, because leaders need a vision. And if you read a chapter 2, and I hope you did, and you see where he went and he checked everything out and he, 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 he didn't go to, to the people right away, he took his time to devise a plan before he presented it to the people. And when we get down to verse 17 and 18, which, was already, which we've already read, uh, he shared this vision with the people because he had worked out a plan. So if you've got vision, have a plan to go along with it. 
Amen. What was his plan? Let me read. Let me, let me tell you. First of all, he shared the vision that he had, but this was his plan. He, uh, he thought it through. He figured it out. He figured out what needed to be done. He figured out how they would accomplish their goals. And he assured them that he had God's blessings. That was his plan. But he shared the vision with them. At first, he didn't tell anybody because he didn't want to walk in there all pious and everything. But once God had given him the vision, he, when he assessed the situation, he shared the plans of the vision with the people. So if you got a vision, you need a plan, leaders. And so, but, but then another thing that you need to understand, when God puts a vision in your mind to accomplish something, share it with other people. Because if you, you're not an island. Man is not an island. So you, when you do that, you pray that the Holy Spirit will inspire those people so that they would come along with you with similar thoughts. And when you encourage people and inspire people, you put together a team. And all we went teamwork is, is what's that teamwork? Make the dream work or something like that. Anyway, uh, you, that, that establishes teamwork. And so, because no man is an island. And so Nehemiah worked with them. He shared his vision and they were all more than willing because he had such good influence over them because of his character, because of his temperament, because of his leadership abilities. They were willing to follow him because of his character, because of, of, of his temperament, because of his attitude. He had a great attitude. And, and, he, he, and I believe he acquired it by, by, by spending time with God knowing who he was in God, knowing who God was. And again, another thing we need to understand that your attitude, your attitude, which is another part of your character, is reflected in your character and your integrity. So if you're going to lead, be integrous about it. Let it show in your character and your attitude towards people. That is so important. You can't be way up here and lead. That's not how it's done. And remember last week we showed the example of Jesus says he didn't come to serve, to be served, but to serve. So Jesus turned it around to show that as leaders, we are servants and we ought to have a servant's heart and a servant's attitude. And I don't know where the time has gone tonight, but it looks like we are at another standstill in our teaching. Uh, but I hope you understand that character is important and that you know that, uh, that your attitude play a major role in determining what you're going to achieve. It's done through your character. And um, your, your mind and your thoughts uh, influences your actions. So keep, it starts first in your mind. And then and your actions are influenced by your mind. So that's why it's so important to have a good heart, to have a servant's heart, and to keep your attitude in check. And, and to know that you are... A servant. You're a leader. Yes, you are. But 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 before you are a leader, you are a servant. God chose you for this position. And he put you in this position to serve, not to be served. So keep your attitude in check. Pastor preached a message uh, a couple of weeks ago about check yourself. That's good advice. That's really good advice. Check yourself. If you're in a leadership position, check yourself. Where are you? Where are you on the scale of, of, of personality? Where are you on the scale of influence? Where are you on the scale of your prayer life? Where are you? How, how much influence do you have with people? Not over people, with people. How much influence do you have? That's so important. And character and temperament and attitude, it's all a part of what is part of a leadership person's personality. So again, our time has slipped away from us. And so next week, we're going to talk about some things in chapter three. We're going to move on to chapter three. And I hope you're reading along with us. So we don't have time to read it all on this hour, that we, this 30 minutes that we have. But go into chapter three, and we're going to see something about the builders and those who built. And it's, it's, it's kind of reading where you're just getting a bunch of names. But you know what that does? Let me say this very quickly. If you take the time to just read this, it, it prepares, it gives you discipline in your Bible study. It may not be the most interesting thing, but you are establishing discipline when you go through there and you read all these names, and you, but, but discipline is being established in the word of God. You, you're learning how 
not to miss anything because sometimes in the midst of all these things, you find little nuggets. So read chapter three and I pray that we will get back together again next week and we're going to continue in the book of Nehemiah. We'll go to chapter four, of course. So read three and four and we'll be prepared to talk about um, integrity. That's what we're going to hang this hat on integrity. So God, I thank you again for this short period of time that we had together. Pray, oh God, that we have set forth some principles for us that are valid in our leadership positions. And we have a good example in front of us as we study Nehemiah and what he did and how he did it. And particularly, Lord, how he met with confrontation is so important, Lord. So as we go forward, Lord, I pray your consistent uh, in, 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 uh, involvement in this lesson with us. Holy Spirit, speak through us that we may impart words of wisdom. This is our prayer we pray and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.